that will move you to tears. Whether they are from sorrow or laughter, there's only one thing you'll be talking about after. The boy likes the girl, but he always strikes out. He strives to impress her, but she has her doubt. No matter what happens, he can't seem to please her. He tries and he tries whenever he sees her. He will not lose hope or give up the fight. He knows that his feelings feel ever so right. So he'll just keep coming back, day after day, because he knows where there's a will, there's a way.
That doesn't sound so bad. Then she comes back. Oh. Next, she wants a clear plastic shower curtain and a metal hair. Then she wants to know where our fuse box is. Then she wants to know how many times her house has been struck by lightning in the past 25 years. <laughs> the questions were non-stop. The miracle I got any work done at all. I just hope Mr. Walker like my sonic. Well, you know how picky he can be. Jake's marriage is what you love. The thing is where you guys. Go away, Cole. What's wrong? Did your mommy forget to get the crust off your toast this morning? Don't you have some kids to torture somewhere? You think this is bad? At my old school? I would change the principal's head on a dare. It was awesome. What school was that again? Was that the same one where you were the reigning arm wrestling champion? Or, or the one where you were voted most likely to become president? Whatever. You're just jealous because you haven't got half the creativity be I have. If you ever want to learn to have some fun around here, let me know. I was thinking. Well, that's a first. <laughs> we should hang out sometime. And why would we want to do that? To get to know each other better. I don't think so, Cole. Suit yourself. It's your loss. Hey, Cole. Oh, hey, Tracy. It's Stacy. Oh, sorry. That's okay. People always get us mixed up. Hey, Cole, what's up? Hey, Lacey. It's Tracy. Oh, right. I'm Lacey. Remember? Sure, whatever. So it's you. <laughs> What about you? I'm so glad you asked. You are looking at the soon to be new members of the Showstoppers. What's that? You haven't heard of the Showstoppers? They're only the school's most prestigious acting troupe. Our auditions are tomorrow, and we are going to kill it, aren't we, girls? Congratulations. So what should we do for our audition? What if we perform a monologue, but like all three of us together? Is it still called a monologue if we're three? Of course it is! Okay, okay, so then... <clears throat> Madison, just checking to see if you changed your mind about... this? Cole! What? The bell's in the ring. We should get to class. Since when do we get to class on time? Come on. Why do guys have to be so creepy? They're not all like that. What about Noah? He seems nice. What do you think, Madison? I think that most guys are too busy showing off to be of any interest to me. Noah included. Preach. You are way too hard on him. And Sydney, you're no help. How are we ever going to find love if you never give anyone a chance? Love is an irrational and unnatural concept thought up by the writers of Hallmark Reading Cards. It doesn't exist. I mean, I wouldn't go that far. Look at my parents. Here we go again. Sydney, I'm serious. My parents have been together for almost 20 years now, and they're still happily married. They actually like each other. Ugh. Look, no relationship is perfect, but if you have things in common and you trust and respect each other, I know it can be pretty spectacular, just like my parents. We know, we know, you tell us every day. Your parents are truly amazing. We're all in awe. I know it doesn't happen often, but true love does exist. It's just nearly impossible to find it in an environment where people are more concerned with how many likes they can get on Instagram instead of how likable they actually are. Good morning, everyone. Could you please take your seats? Um, my student teacher should have been here by now, but she must be running a little late. I'll just get things started while we wait for her. I trust you all of your sonnets. Please pass them up to the front. Brandon 
Where is your Sonic? I didn't get to finish it. I was sick last night. Again, Brandon, this is becoming a habit. You can't possibly be sick as often as you say you are. Trust me, Mr. Walker. He can. Well, I better have it by the end of the day. Yes, sir. Sorry I'm late, Mike. It's Mr. Walker in front of the students. We've been over this, Miss Gray. Yeah, I keep forgetting about that. What's up, class? Miss Gray, you have to be in class before the students arrive. See, I thought that was more of a suggestion than a rule, per se. No, it's a rule! I know this is your first student teaching stage, but you have to put in some effort. You know, showing up to class on time, maintaining a professional persona for the students, coming to class with your lesson plans completed. If you don't value their education, why should they? Sir, yes, sir. Did you prepare the lesson for today? Sure. Okay, kids. Get up. Okay, where were we? Romeo and Juliet. Right, exactly. Romeo and Juliet. So, um, it's a play, and we're reading it. Miss Gray, do you have a lesson prepared or don't you? I do. Relax. Uh, this guy, right? Okay, so, my plan for today <laughs> is, um, oh, why don't we watch the movie? But we haven't even finished reading the play yet. Why read the play when you can watch the movie. The movie is always better. Am I right? Okay, Miss Gray, you can have a seat now. But I was just finding my groove. Sit. Rude. Please open your copies of Romeo and Juliet to page 19. When we left off in our last class, Romeo was under Juliet's balcony and he was marveling at her wondrous beauty. Let's take it from there. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks. It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair son, I kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief. That thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, for she is envious. It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, that I were a glove upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. Cole! Present. We're on page 19. Sydney. Mr. Walker, how are we supposed to take this guy seriously? I'm not sure I understand what you mean. No one talks like that, especially not guys. They'd rather die than talk talking about their Do you think the modern boys would be as articulate as Romeo? 
Okay, let's rewind a little bit. Before you can answer that question, we have to find the modern equivalent for that life. What life do you own a window break? How do you say that today? I don't know. Did he break a window? <laughs> no, I think you're confused. He's not saying he broke the window. He's saying there's light coming from the window. <laughs> how am I supposed to know? It says window break. And how can Julia be the sun? Does that mean he she's hot? <laughs> Are you feeling faint? Do you need to lie down? Mom, you're embarrassing me. 
I promise, we could talk all those about it when I get home. But please, just run here. We'll do more than talk about it. I'm giving you a full medical workup after school. And we'll replenish your fluids. Fine. I'll set up an ID for you too. A couple of bags of plasma should get you back on your feet. Okay, bye. Bye, I love you. Hey, Hannah. Hi, Brandon. Hey, Nosebleed. Uh, how is it? Better. The nurse said I, the nurse said I should do the Kleenex in just in case it starts bleeding again. It took a long time for it to stop. I felt like I lost a bucket full of this. Oh, that's gross. Awful. It's nothing. Happens at least once a week. So anyway, I just wanted to say thanks for helping me up earlier when, you know. You're welcome. <clears throat> so, you're uh, eating an apple. Yep. Cool. <laughs> Lots of vitamins. I'm sorry? I, I said, uh, I said it has a, a, lots of vitamins. Oh, yeah, I guess it does. Uh, would you like to sit? I'd better not. The sudden change in elevation might make my nose start to bleed again. Oh. Good. Are you, uh, on a diet? <laughs> Why? Do you think I should be? <laughs> no. Uh, uh, of course not. I just well, spent you know, you're eating an apple and apples are healthy, so... It's okay, yeah. Brandon. I'm just messing with you. I have my lunch right here. See? Do you want half of my sandwich? No, thanks. I'm not allowed to eat bread. Oh. Gluten intolerant. Oh. <laughs> there now. See ya. See ya. What a weirdo. I think he's sweet. You think everyone is sweet. Do you finally see what I mean about guys our age? Yeah, can you imagine Shakespeare standing there saying, oh, so you're eating an apple? Stop it, you guys. Are you on a diet? I mean, come on. You don't need to be a member of Mensa to know that you should never ask anyone that question. He wasn't trying to be rude. That might just make it worse. How are you feeling? I'm fine with swivel, just a nosebleed. Would you like to come to my office and talk about it? Talk about my nosebleed? Sometimes it helps to get things off your chest. I don't have anything on my chest. Actually, my doctor said I have a spot on my lung I need to watch out for. But other than that, I'm good. I don't need a counselor or anything. You'd be surprised, Brandon. Sometimes our emotional pain manifests itself physically. Sorry, is that fine? Fine. Did you get into any arguments lately? Do you hate your parents? No, I don't hate my parents. Sometimes a nosebleed is just a nosebleed. <laughs> nurse's office. You've been sitting there this whole time? Not exactly. I passed out for about an hour. So then, I was lying down. <laughs> look, 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 look. My sister's looking for me and I don't think I have the patience to deal with her right now. Could you distract her for a while while I make my getaway? What should I do? I don't know. Just talk to her. Ask her about her inventions or something. Here she comes. Good. Get her attention. Rachel! Hi, Brandon. Have you seen my brother anywhere? Your brother? <laughs> no, uh, no, not recently. So what's up? Nothing. Noah tells me you're working on some invention in your basement. What are you making? Why? What did he say exactly? Nothing. Just that you were building something top secret. If you know it's top secret, why are you asking me about it? I don't know. Noah! Hi, Rachel! You look really pretty today. Thanks. 
and your hair is really shiny. You must be using a new conditioner. Actually, I am. Eh? I love your top. Thanks. So, have you heard the awesome news? No. We're joining the Showstoppers. It's the school's premier theater collective. We'll be performing plays and stuff like that. That's great. I'm looking for my brother. Did you see where he went? Guys, for our audition, do you think we need a team cheer? You know, something to get us focused before we get out there and perform? Tracy, you're thinking like a cheerleader. You need to start thinking like an actor. You're so right, Lacey. Okay, here's how we should prepare. Okay, okay so then we do like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Noah! Rachel! I have a meeting after school, so you'll be getting home before me. So? So, promise me that while I'm gone, you won't try to take a peek at my project in the basement? <laughs> Why would I look at it? I probably wouldn't know what it was anyway. Probably. But nevertheless, I still want your firm and solemn oath that you'll respect my privacy. Fine, I promise. So what's your meeting about? If you must know, I have my bi-weekly Game of Thrones support group uh, Porker? The final season starts soon. It's almost over. How are we supposed to cope with less is great without support? Use your head, Noah. Jeez. How do I not know this about you? So what do you do in your meetings anyways? Talk about your feelings and stuff? Sometimes. We mostly sit around practicing our death racking. Listen. <clears throat> Impressive. I know, right? See you later. <laughs> what does she want? She wants to make sure I don't touch your little experience in the face of what you got a game of the other important. Huh. Do you want to come over after school? Sure. I just need to stop at my place first. So my mom can give me an IV. Trust me. You don't want to know. To be or not to be, that is the question. The boy's dilemma in an after school session. He vowed to his sister to be good and true, but impulse is strong. What's a boy to do? Should he honor his oath and earn her trust? Well, he said that he would, and therefore he must. But when friends come a-calling, convictions change, and what they discover is really quite strange. A device quite surprising is somehow revealed, even though he had promised to keep it concealed. Now here is the question, to go, to stay. To find out the answer, keep watching this play. Game of Thrones support group? No, Game of Thrones. We really need to hold a family meeting when you get home. 
I mean, that show is highly inappropriate for someone of her age. So anyways, how's the convention? When will you be home? Friday? Okay. I'll make sure she doesn't burn the house down while you're gone. Love you too. <coughs> Bye. Hey. Hey. Is that your mom? Yep. She's out of town for the week. A whole week with the house yourself? Man, you just threw a party. Yeah. I can invite Madison to show her my Hot Wheels collection. <laughs> can you believe her today? Acting like the leading expert in teen romance. Telling me I don't know how to talk to a girl. Well, do you? Sure I do. Why? Because of your extensive experience in the matters of the heart? Whose side are you on? Yours, of course. You really like her that much? Things are just different with her. Madison isn't like any other girl I know. She's smart, and pretty, and challenges me in ways I never see coming. She makes me want to be more than I am. But she's also insanely frustrating. She wants to be rude and I don't know how to do that. I blame Mr. Walker. If he hadn't made us read Shakespeare, Madison wouldn't be on this romance kick. How am I supposed to compete with Shakespeare? Okay, pretend I'm Madison. What? Pretend I'm her. What would you say? I'm not doing this. Come on. You need the practice. Okay. <clears throat> Madison, I know I can come off as arrogant and obnoxious sometimes, but that's not who I really am. It's just what I do when I'm nervous. You make me nervous. So you're so smart and beautiful and sweet. And, and yes, Noah? I'm not doing this. I'll never be able to talk to her. She wants a knight in shining armor to come and sweep her off her feet. How can I measure up? I'll just have to accept that she's out of my league. Do you have a chinchilla? No. Weird. This, this definitely feels like a chinchilla allergy. Brandon, you know I don't have a chinchilla. Whatever. Got any Kleenex? Right there. <coughs> What's that? Rachel's latest experiment. What is it? I don't know. She won't tell me about it and I promised I wouldn't look. Oh. <coughs> oh. <coughs> 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 What is that? So that's what the shower curtain was for. What do you think it does? Probably nothing. Well, Rachel's as smart as she is. Probably the something. Should I try pressing a button? You just said you promised not to even look at it. Don't you always keep your promises? I tried to. Besides, you're the one who took the blanket off. That was an accident. Come on! What's the harm of pushing one button? Don't you dare! Get away from Tyrion! You named your top secret invention? It's not so top secret anymore thanks to you two! You promised you wouldn't look, Noah! It was an accident! Brandon was sneezing and he fell and the blanket came Save off! Save it! Thanks for nothing! <laughs> Maybe we should try 
then it's something else before we use human subjects? Like what? I don't know, like an animal or something? Maybe a hamster? And what do we do when it comes back? Interview it to find out where it went? <laughs> no. I'll go. If a scientist is not confident in her own work, then she shouldn't be a scientist. <laughs> Why don't we all go? Uh, I don't think that's such a great idea. I'm not a good traveler. I get motion sickness. Uh, and I'm claustrophobic. I, uh, I forgot to pack my toothbrush. Fine, Brandon. Stop being such a baby. It probably doesn't do anything anyways. Don't worry about it. Ready, gentlemen? Ready. Uh... Okay, stand here with me. Nothing. We're cool. Cool? 
Yeah, we're good. Y'all good? <laughs> we would not like anything right now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Raphael, oh Raphael, wherefore art thou Raphael? No, no, that's rubbish. John, oh John, no, too pedestrian. Demetrius, oh Demetrius. Shh, Brendan, look, is that, could it be? Orpheus, oh Orpheus, wherefore art thou Orpheus? This is useless! I'm a worthless charlatan! Oh, villainous quill! Why hast thou forsaken me? I cannot write one good word of comfort. I am destined to be a penniless beggar for the rest of my years. I am fortune full! <laughs> Guys, isn't that- Shakespeare! Shakespeare! Shakespeare? <laughs> I remember writing a love story of such epic proportions that the vow were to cut it into little stars. It would make the fate of heaven so fine that all the world would be in love with tonight and pay no worship to the garish sign. I'm sure. What do we do? What do we do? I don't know. Let me think. Uh, uh, maybe we could go over and talk to him. Why? So, no license girl, Madison. Brent. But Madison is so not interested. Hey. She's always going on about how if only guys could talk like Shakespeare did, they have better luck in the romance department. So, no one's been trying to figure out a way to get close to her. Here's his chance. If he gets a few pointers from B, William Shakespeare, he'll be able to say all that sappy stuff that Madison wants to hear. And you get the girl. You think that Shakespeare can give you pointers on how to get a girl? With Shakespeare's help, I'm sure I can win Madison over. You do know that Shakespeare spent most of his adult life stuck in a loveless marriage, right? Why must you ruin everything? You know what? Never mind. You definitely should pick his brain. It's not that easy. Why not? Well, let's say she, he gives me a few tips, I go back, and they work. Then what? I'm still gonna have to talk to Madison after that? I need more than just a few pointers. I don't get it. Don't you see? I need Shakespeare there with me. He's gonna have to feed me my lions for a while. At least, so Madison is so in love with me that it won't matter what I say anymore. How are you going to get him to come back with us? I don't think you can just walk up to him and say, excuse me, Mr. Shakespeare, but I'm from the future and I would really love it if you would come back with me and feed me lies to say to this girl I really like so that you'll fall in love with me. You're right. There's only one option. Well, Tim, <laughs> Are you serious? Completely. I don't think that's our only option. I don't think that's even in the running as far as options go. We can't give up Shakespeare. The bard. Have you completely lost your mind? We won't keep him forever. Just until he helps you win Madison over. Listen to yourself. We won't keep him forever. You talk about him like he's some sort of pet. You can't give up him. Absolutely out of the question. Come on, Rachel. You have the bracelet thingy. We can't do this without your help. I can't believe we're having this conversation. I just don't. She's right, you know. This is a pretty big violation of his human rights. You're acting as if we're going to beat him and put him in some windowless cell. We'll show him around, treat him like a guest. It'll be fun. You know, when we think about it, we'll be doing him a huge favor. How many people can say that they've traveled to the future? Once he realizes what we've done for him, I'm sure he'll be grateful. I mean, he's got a point. Come on, Rach, what do you say? Help me do this, and I'll owe you bigger than anyone has ever owed you. I'll do whatever you want. Fine. But I want to go on the record as to say that I think this is a very horrible idea. Julia noted. Possibly the worst idea in the history of bad ideas. Mm hmm got it. So, how do we do this? Okay, I'll go over and talk to him. Oh, and I know. While Mo's talking to him, I'll sneak up behind him and grab his arm so he can't get away. What? 
My mom made me take a self defense course after Tim Bleeker started taking my lunch money in grade four. Remember Tim Bleeker? That. Remember Tim Bleeker? That mean kid? The same Tim Bleeker who's now in grade five? The one who lives down the street? The one with the purple bike? Hey, he may be little, but he's mean. Can we get back to the plan, please? Okay. So, Brandon, you grab Shake through your vice like grip. Then, Rachel, you beam us out of here. Got it? Got it. Okay. Wait for my signal. Art thou the angel of death, the homage of doom come to wring this mortal soul from its world breathed flesh? Hast thou come to slay me and put an end to my misery? A misery so great in nature that it's only surpassed by the sheer incompetence of my writing? I am a hack, a tartless, soulless being, unworthy of the foulest honor. No, I, uh. uh. Speak and be plain about it. I haven't time to waste on such nonsense. Out with it! What is it you desire from me? Uh, I wonder what you were writing. What? These? These are the musings of a feeble brain. I'm trying my hand at writing for the first time. But I feel that it's all for naught. I have neither the stamina nor the talent for a task such as this. I feel that I will never write anything of great importance. Alas, such is lying. Well, anyways, my friends and I were in town for a while and we were wondering if, um... Was that the signal? No! He just ran his hands through his hair. Was that the signal? No! How are we supposed to know when he gives the signal? What if they give it already and we miss it? This is all so stressful. Is he hot here? I bet you'd be a food on the stakeout. That's the signal. Come on! To help you? Exactly! <laughs> Surely you jest! This is a farce of some kind! A ruse to make me the butt of your joke! No, this is not a joke. You're really in our time. 2019? Yes! It's 
Mr. Shakespeare, sir, your highness, we're not joking. You really are in 2019. Look, see, this is a time machine. Rachel made it, and we used it to travel back to your time. This is certainly an impressive piece of machinery. <laughs> but you cannot expect me to believe that this is what you say it is. Much less that it is the work of a woman. Such, such contraptions can only exist in the mind of insane. But how insane? I don't think so. No, we're not crazy. Then you must be very skilled warlocks to have created this beast like a travel through time. No, we're not warlocks. In the future, there are many things you've never even dreamed of. This machine took us back to your time. 1585. Yeah, 1585. Where we landed in that bar. The foggy bottom. Yeah, the foggy bottom. Where we saw you and decided to bring you back with us so you could help us. Speak for yourself. So you can help me. You're really in our time. You have to believe me. To believe or not to believe? That is the question. If what thou sayest is true, then thou hast committed an egregious offense. A pox on you! A curse into the heavens! Mr. Shakespeare, I just want you to know that I was against this plan from the start. I told them not to do it, but they wouldn't listen to me. Well, of course not. Why would they? Thou art but a woman. Are women nervous of shame? Now, tell me how to make use of this plastic contraption so that I may return from whence I came. I'm afraid I can't do that just yet. Why ever not? I need something from you first. Rubbish! I wish you'd turn to my time and thou art but a lonely fool if thou thinkest I would have one finger to help you. It'll only take a couple of days, and then I'll send you home as soon as we're done. Nonsense! I demand you send me home now! This instant! I'm sorry. Please try to understand. I'm very desperate. Desperate, you say? See, there's this girl. Ah, there's always a girl. <laughs> Anyways, I really like her, but she won't give me a chance. She's obsessed with all your fancy words. So I thought, if you could help me figure out what to say to her, I could finally get her to like me. My fancy words? Yeah, we're reading Romeo and Juliet in English class. What is this Romeo and Juliet of which you speak? It's one of the plays you wrote. You're really famous. <laughs> me? A famous playwright? <laughs> it's true. You're the most famous playwright in the world. Every high school student has to read your plays. Look, Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. Uh, I am astonished, but how can you miss the past? I have written not make me worthy of the title playwright. Trust me, you will. You're both famous. Everybody knows your name. How can this be? Oh, wondrous joy! You have come to me marvelous much. I thank you a thousand times. I thank you. So will you help me? It will only take a couple of days. Two, three days top. Three days, you say? Three days will quickly steep themselves at night. Three nights will quickly dream away the time. Alright, I'll do it. Thank you, thank you so much. You won't regret this, you'll see. What is it I must do? So there's this girl. Madison. Yeah. Madison. She thinks guys already don't know how to be honest and open. She wants romance, but I don't know how to do that. So I thought you could teach me on how to treat a lady like, well, a lady. Ah, so thou needest counsel on the art of wooing. I guess so. To woo is not an easy thing. You see, women are the fairer sex, the weaker sex, and as such require a great deal of delicacy. They are neither as intelligent nor as independent as men, you see. <laughs> they must be treated like fragile flowers. He can't be serious. You must compliment her. You must bring her little gifts. You must make her feel as though she was the only woman on earth. 
Tell her how your heart is a pounding drum in your chest whenever she is near. Tell her that you sail to the ends of the earth for a mere glimpse of a radiant face, a touch of her hand, the warmth of her smile. Should you be writing this down? Shh, shh. I'm just saying, if these lines don't work on Madison, you just say them for the next girl. The next girl? Art thou in love, my good man? Love? Yes, love. Love is not love which alters when an alteration finds, or bends to a mover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever fixing mark that looks untempered and is never shaken. It is a star to every wandering bark whose worth unknown, although it's highly taken. Can we get back to the wooing lesson? Right, where was I? Uh, something about how to travel to the end of the earth to see her smile or whatever. Exactly. Okay, we'll try it out tomorrow. Are there any other pointers I should know? Yes, be not too fancy in your admiration or your meaning will be lost. Speak plainly. One must remember that women are somewhere empty-headed. The minds are not meant for higher education. And therefore, if thou speakest too eloquently, it will be a waste indeed. I will give you some simple phrases that will cut to a core even the hardest heart. I've had about enough. You are the most arrogant, chauvinistic, pompous son of a- Rachel! No, no! What is wrong with the wench? She seems a mite anxious. Perhaps it is the black plague. Has thou considered bleeding her? I'm quite certain a few leeches will put her right in rain. <laughs>